So good morning, my beloveds, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Ukiah, California. This is our virtual service, and we're so glad that everyone is here today. Um, I'm looking forward to this service. There's going to be a lot of newness for us today. So um, just sit back and relax and know that whatever you are seeking, that the answer is here in the music and the message and the treatment exactly what you have been seeking, that answer is here and available to you right now. So we're gonna begin this treatment or we begin this service with an opening, opening spiritual mind treatment by Victoria Wright. So Victoria, can you take it away? There, I'm muted. Okay. Good morning, beloveds. We are free. <laughs> okay, if you'd like to close your eyes gently and just relax into your chairs. Have a deep breath. Have a couple of those. The perfection of spirit, that perfection operates in me, as me, through me and around me, all through my life. It expresses the perfect oneness that I am one with it. The divine manifests as me, as it is in nature. I am God in expression. Therefore, I am deserving of all good in my life. I am grateful for realizing this perfection in my life, ever deepening my connection with the one through this guidance. I rest in the assurance of my own well being, my own well being, which is God's well being manifesting as me. And I am so thankful for all of this, for this realization, for this well-being, for this spirit that I am part of. And with faith, I release this word to the law, knowing that as I speak it, it is manifesting knowing that it is so, and so it is. So it is. So it is. Thank you very much. That is lovely. And uh, so now we're going to, I, as I said, we have newness uh, around us today. And today, we just met Tim a couple of weeks ago where he, he showed up at our virtual service. And then we found out that he happens to be a musician. So we've uh, asked him to be our soloist today. And just a couple of things um, that I happen to know because I went and I looked at his website <laughs> is that Tim's been a singer songwriter for uh, 20 years and he performs his inspirational music at lots of churches and venues around the Bay Area. He's actually coming to us from the Fremont area today, this morning. Um, and he has, you know, some of those churches have been um, the uh, Tri-City Religious Science Center, which is J. Scott Neal's church, and then there's a Unitarian Universalist in Redwood City, and the Center for Spiritual Living on the Peninsula, that's just a few of them, but in addition to music, he has been a student of the New Thought teachings for most of his life. And the inspiration for most of his songs come from those teachers and writers, and he named specifically Ernest Holmes, J. Scott Neal, and the Dalai Lama. So I'm very excited to have Tim here this morning to perform for us. And so Tim, take it away. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, 
light of the world is something anyone can choose to be. Knowing who and what we are is the key. Spirit expressing in through and dance. Cursing the darkness won't do a thing to help us find our way. Through the confusion and into a better day. Let's try lighting a candle instead. The healing always begins with a new understanding and a release, knowing that it's done in the mind of the infinite. It's good enough. Love and compassion for everyone are necessities. If we just think of them as luxuries, then humanity cannot survive. The light of the world is something anyone can choose to be. Knowing who and what we are is the key. And letting it be our way. And letting it be our way and letting it be our way. This is the way we applaud. Thank you. That was fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. And so, like I said, wonderful day for new things and so i want to introduce our speaker for today and um the speaker is uh, christina jones she is currently a religious science practitioner at the mile high center in um lakewood colorado <laughs> took me a minute to remember the state <laughs> and she is also currently a senior She'll be graduating from ministerial training in May, and she is also at the Holmes Institute at Mile High. And, um, and in addition to that, she is a certified life coach, nutritional coach, she's a public speaker. And I loved because in the bio she sent me, you, you know, I'm all about the kids. And uh, she definitely demonstrates a willingness to serve. And one of her big things I guess right now is that she's mentoring youth at the Boys and Girls Club, uh, but she also has served in various other nonprofit foundations, uh, domestic violence shelters, homeless shelters, uh, and it's set across the country. So she's she gets around. Uh, she is also, uh, she has assisted in the training and supporting numerous law enforcement officers in the state of California in a crisis intervention training. And that is actually where she met her husband. And it just said seven years ago. So she's known him for a while and they're, they're together. Uh, so she lives, she plays, she thrives with her husband and their furry pets. 
in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. Um, and I liked this because one of the things that she said in her bio is that she supports everyone's true potential to transform their lives through the power of love, compassion, presence. And then the very last slide that she said, she said, I am Christina K. Jones, a healing emissary of light for myself and the world. So I just, I think we're in for a treat. So I'm very excited to introduce and uh, I have a topic title for you. If this isn't it, you have all, you can change it. <laughs> I have down that her topic for today is let's do this, our time is now. So let me present to you, Christina, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Candice. It's so great to see everyone and so great to support this beautiful, beautiful community. And so um, I think I forgot to delete that from the bio, but anyway, it goes into what the talk title is. <laughs> um, Dr. Candice was so gracious to allow me to pick the talk title. And I think about April, I love springtime in, in Colorado. We go from spring, winter, fall in one day. You never know what you're going to get. But I thought about the word A when I was meditating to, to prepare for this time. And I got, you know, April. And it's like, and what dropped in was an apple a day. And then I started thinking an A a day keeps spirit at play. And what that means is then three other words came in through divine source, abundance, affirming, and appreciation. So I'm gonna talk briefly about those three A's. First is abundance. Ernest Holmes, our beautiful founder of this movement, a, a quote from a Holmes reader on practical wisdom. Today, I expect every thing good to come to me for I know that divine abundance is forever manifesting itself in my affairs. And I'm clear in this time in our country with the virus and so many other up, upheavals as we are clearing consciously on this planet, a lot of people are feeling lack and challenge in regards to abundance. I want to speak of abundance not only from a monetary standpoint, but looking at the universe as being abundant. Scientists have no idea how many stars there really are in a galaxy. The universe is abundance. Our cells, we get a new body every seven years. New cells always regener regenerating. There's an abundance of positive thoughts. Abundance is our birthright. There's an abundance of flowers. There's an abundance of birds. And the human ego, many times on this planet, want us to come from fear. But in these teachings, we know better. And sometimes we have to be reminded. I look out at all in Colorado, all the pine needles and pine cones are all over my property. There's an abundance. So the whole universe is abundant. Therefore, we are abundance. I'm going to repeat again, Ernest Holmes, just a part of that. The vine abundance is forever. And I will add everywhere is manifesting in our affairs. And I'm this other word of affairs, that's everything. I know for me, I'm clearing clutter because I realize I have an abundance of clutter, of papers, <laughs> books. <laughs> and now I'm looking at it. I, I went in my storage room and I was like, these huge, beautiful tea jars I have, I have three. I probably use one a year. So I'm releasing, as the universe loves a vacuum, I'm releasing to give that two of them away to someone else so they can feel abundance. What are we sitting on? What minister, Dr. Roger Teal Malhai, many years ago, 
during the financial crash, he said, what are you sitting on? I'll never forget that. Well, many of us are sitting on things that we could be giving out to receive abundance. We cannot receive an abundance of joy or happiness or even finances unless we give that. If you're seeking love, give it. Give it to yourself, give it to others. If you're seeking an abundance of compassion, be compassionate with yourself, be compassionate with others. That's something where a lot of us are seeking on. And I'll touch briefly on the finances. Are, are, you, are you able to give not only money, but time as well? Are you watching the finances? Are you feeling grateful for what you do have? Are you even able to donate a dollar? If you're able to get coffee, some Starbucks coffees are $4, you're, you are available, if you're willing, to give a, even a dollar to someone. Our country is abundant. I did some research recently and a lot of people have come up that America is broke. The government's broke. I've always refused to believe that long before these teachings, long before. And then a friend of mine who works in the cell phone industry said, the United States government from everyone having a cell phone receives over $6 billion a month in taxes. Those little, you know, $10, $17 charges on our cell phone bills. For every man, woman, and child that has a cell phone bill, it equates to over $6 billion a month. That's just in cell phones. Therefore, this country is abundant. I did not need to search for any other evidence. So therefore, we're abundance in the eyes of spirit. Our country is abundant. Our world's abundant. Our universe is abundant. Next, the other A, affirming. What are you affirming? I have caught myself when I've had days of moments of affirming the worst for myself, of feeling lack or confidence, you know, just, just saying the craziest things and I have to catch, truly catch myself or seek a practitioner or a minister to help me and hold for me what they're affirming. What are you affirming every day? What, when I looked up the word affirmation from not only a religious science perspective, but just going to Webster, it's pro proclaiming, taking an oath, a pledge, a statement. What are you affirming for yourself? Are you affirming your overweight, underweight, not good enough? That's judgment. I feel it's time on our planet for peace. Let's affirm peace. Even when you watch the news and some days, yes, I cry. I watch to be aware so I can affirm what's really truth. It's time for all of us to affirm peace, love for everyone, healing light, to affirm the positive. Many times, some media will go to the negative. They're affirming fear. They're affirming doubt. They're affirming lack. How about we all begin to affirm a new, to affirm a positive new way of life. Even some days when you can't feel it, I speak for myself. Some days when I'm going, oh my word. Thanksgiving morning, I received a phone call that a um, aunt, by marriage passed away on Thanksgiving. And this is my, my first cousin who's like a brother to me. Then I get a phone call, my stepson has COVID. This is Thanksgiving morning from seven to 10. It was just coming and I was seeing text, pray for this person, pray for that person. And it, it took a while as I was cooking dinner, making coffee, watching my husband just, he was shaking his head. I could see there was a, and awe and like a what's going on. And I went outside and it's like, I'm gonna affirm everything is gonna unfold perfectly. And I had this peace that came over me. 
even though I was scared during during this time in our in our country, first Thanksgiving couldn't be with family. I was affirming one day we will all be together again. Affirming the positive, affirm what we want in our heart. And the rest of the day chose to whatever my husband and I eat, we watch fun TV, no news, affirm affirm and those that call those relatives I affirm we affirm that a healing's coming affirming a new possibility and finally appreciation gratitude affirmation is in our spiritual mind treatments and appreciation gratitude is another step my angelo states when you have an attitude of gratitude, you wake up saying every morning, thank you. Thank you, an attitude of gratitude. I've been with my husband for some time. We met in 2007 and a long time ago, he shared with a group of friends that every morning he just lays in bed, he's quiet. And he makes a list in his head what he's grateful for, what he's in appreciation for. I didn't know that. He told me last year. He's been doing it for years. It's time for us to even appreciate the small things, breath, food, flowers, birds, the kitty cat. <laughs> Find there's something every moment of the day to be in gratitude that you can move your fingers. And even those that are in physical challenge, that they're still here, that there's love and that there is an un, unjudgmental divine creator, that, that consciousness light that is in appreciation of us. We are built from love. We are of the light. To hold on to every moment to be in appreciate, to tell someone I appreciate you. A couple of days ago, I'm at the local grocery store and I know a lot of the, the women up here and I love them dearly. I said, I thank you for being here. Because a lot of them, a lot of people are wanting to quit, nurses, Everyone working out in the world, they're, I experience some days their fear and their angst and their anxiety. I said, thank you for being here. I love coming here knowing you're going to be here. And she's like, Christina, I appreciate you. So that's my new thing. Instead of saying, in lieu of saying thank you, I appreciate you. And it's time for us to appreciate each other as a country and as a hu human species, go out and appreciate the ground. If you have clean water, appreciate it. Clean air, appreciate it. And what appreciates? The universe will appreciate you. That flow of energy will continue to move effortlessly. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate many of us, me included, I've judged myself. How about I appreciate myself? Appreciate myself for not getting angry with someone. I found myself getting angry at the news one day and I stopped. My, I chanted compassion. I chanted, I'm going to be in compassion. And when I did that, I felt a shift. And then I appreciated myself, like even a pat on the back. The divine appreciates us. We're here to shine. We're here to be in abundance, to affirm the positive, to affirm the light, to affirm the peace. Even when you have challenging relatives, I know I do. I set the uh, 
a dear cousin, I appreciate you. She was in judgment, in disagreement with me. I took a breath and I could hear a voice said, put your feet on the ground, don't go in the story and just say, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you for calling me. It shifted the whole conversation. A lot of people are in, some people are choosing to be in fear and in doubt and in rage, but the love's always there. The love's at the top. The cream rises to the top. And what leads to that is appreciation. And lastly, I will read this to you. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. That is Psalm 33, 9. Let's speak abundance. Let's affirm it in our heart, mind, body, and soul. If you're able, speak it loud, speak it proud, and speak your appreciation of yourself and others. Even the gas station attendant, appreciate. It will flood the planet with love and gratitude and harmony. We will all be shifted. <sighs> so now let's go into an affirmative prayer to lock this in. I know there is one God known by no name and all names, the Alpha and the Omega, the true light, the true universal divine creator, holy presence. In this moment, we are all unified. We are all breathing the same air. We are all pumping blood through our veins. We are in that unification of light and love. There's one divine creator and we're unified that in abundance. I know this for myself, everyone is called, everyone's looking later, everyone's feeling this energy energetically flowing into the universal field It is spoke, it is spoken and the truth is revealed. I am aware in this moment, we are all abundant. We breathe it in. I am now affirming that abundance. I'm affirming light, peace, harmony, joy, appreciation, total recognition, the just recognizing that light, that love, that presence, that harmony of this new consciousness rising now, that Christ grid is here, that Christ-like energy that consciousness of the one mind is here. I affirm it and I say it is so, and I am in appreciation and high gratitude for this church, for the loving service of Dr. Candace for over 40 years of her ministry of light, love, and hope. I am grateful for CSL, all CSLs. I'm grateful for this movement. I'm grateful for the light rising, the love, in appreciation. And I release this into the affirming, loving law right here and right now where it's done and complete. It is made whole. And so it is. Amen. Selah. Mm. And so it is. Oh, thank you, Christina. That was so great. That was so beautiful. So I have asked Christina to stay on uh, when we go into our after service chat. So if you guys have any questions or comments you'd like to uh, share with her, then that you'll, you'll have that opportunity to do that. Uh, so now is the time for our offering. So we're gonna um, move into that. And so as always, we will be giving, um, you know, we'll be reading our affirmation together. And uh, so keep in, keep those cards and letters and checks and electric transfers coming because, you know, it is because of you that we're here. And we deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate all of your gifts and pledges. So thank you. So here it is. So stay with me now. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies this gift with all my heart and with all my mind. I know I am saying yes 
is something I value. With all others present here, we dedicate these gifts to the values and vision we share. Okay, so thank you again to Christina. Now we're gonna go on for another song. Um, oh wait, I'm supposed to do announcements first. Hang in there, Tim, just for a minute. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so we do have some announcements. Um, and uh, so I, I wanna start these announcements because um, I feel like it's at some point I got this, this hit about I am here for a time such as this and which I think is an amazing line. And I think that we are all here for a time such as this. And it, the time, as we know, this last year has changed a lot for us and it's about to change again. Uh, latest word that is coming down the pike to me anyway, is there is a really strong possibility that we'll be able to reopen the center on the 1st of June. Um, there are centers throughout California that are uh, beginning to open, they're a little bit of a limited, you know, and I haven't talked to all of them, just kind of got some hits, but um, have heard that it looks like June 1st would be uh, an opportunity for us. In order for that to happen, we have a bunch of stuff that needs to happen uh, because I think, you know, in talking with the board and then just talking with some of the other people, that it's gonna be really important. In fact, it's gonna be imperative that we are able to live stream our services. And there are a few ways to do that, which are not terribly difficult, but it's gonna take some, some people and some dedication. And I, I just really need to remind you that I am not here forever. So I need somebody, you know, a couple of somebodies maybe to step forward and help us in how we're gonna do that and how we're gonna start moving towards our reopening. Um, and one of the things is being able to live stream from the church, because right now, you know, we're using my tablet here at my house. And so but the church needs to have a way and it can just be a phone. We would need somebody who'd be willing to sit in the office to monitor because uh, that live stream, we might not have this kind of a chat because we might be switching over platforms to doing it uh, Facebook Live or YouTube Live or something like that. So there would be a chat box you can make comments, but there'd be no discussion before or after a service. Uh, but we also just, more than anything, we need to look at what kind of equipment we need. And one of the things uh, that has come up as a suggestion, which I think is great, is that we get a monitor that um, we can put in the sanctuary. So if we have a guest speaker, such as Christina, who's coming in from out of state or out of region, that she can still come and speak to the congregation. And it really opens up the possibilities of who we can get to come and, and speak at our center. Um, and as you know, uh, we, we have some guest speakers scheduled already. Uh, what, we're, what we're looking at is having a guest speaker every other week. Um, they might not always be the, like Christine, Christina and Gina, who are uh, seniors right now at Holmes Institute, but um, we could, it kind of opens up a possibility of who we can have. So I really do need, so far I haven't gotten any response from anyone, please email me uh, if you're interested in helping out in, in getting back into the building. Uh, so that's one thing. The next thing is uh, we're, we're trying to reestablish a selection search committee so this, this committee would be the ones that are kind of in charge of our uh, search for a new senior minister. So if you would like to participate in that, and I, I kind of am surprised because I haven't, again, I've heard back from one person now, <laughs> but we need a lay person, a practitioner, a board member, but we're not limited to that. 
And I will probably serve on that committee, but as it would be ex officio, I wouldn't be making any decisions for you. Uh, I would be able to help you get answers when, when there's confusion. And one of the very first things that the selection committee needs to do is relook at the package that we gave that's on the open pulpit list um, that Julie uh, Lobato at in Golden has has suggested that we should look at that and redo parts of it. Not all of it, some of it's great, but she just said just to try to make it a little bit more inviting. So again, if you're interested in doing something like that, um, I'm not sure exactly how many, you know, we're, I think to begin with, we might meet, you know, uh, every week or something, but then I think, you know, once, once, we, once we have everything in place, it would be more like once a month. But part of what the selection committee, when we do have people that are uh, looking to be a candidate for this position, they would be the ones that were reviewing reviewing any material that comes in before we invite them to come and speak at the church. So, uh, so again, please let me know. And every time I say let me know, that means use my email, you know, canvas at pacific.net, um, because I don't, I don't check the church's email. And so when it goes there, I don't always see it. Um, and uh, so that's good. Anyway, so that's the second one. Third one, again, we are still making uh, donations to Building Bridges, which is a homeless shelter here in Ukiah. And Teresa, who is on the call today. Hey, Teresa, <laughs> she's wavy. Um, Teresa is willing to collect uh, donations. And we have this long list of paper towels, um, cleaning supplies, disinfectant, but it can even, it can also be uh, old sleeping bags, you know, clean, gently used, those kind of things. But pretty much uh, they need everything for, you can imagine, you know, uh, for, the, for the residents that are, are there. And um, so you can drop off your donations at Teresa's. You can drop them off on uh, Judy Morgan, who is one of the directors down there. You could drop it off on her front porch if you want. You just, you know, leave a little note that says, you know, for Building Bridges, or you can take your donations directly to Building Bridges on, on you know, most of you know where it is on State Street, so it's pretty easy to find. And you can call from the parking lot and someone will come out and unload your car. So it's really easy. So, um, Candace, can I say something? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to be going in on Wednesday. Um, so, um, if anybody has anything, you can just call me or something, you know, that I'll make arrangements. Um, I, I know I haven't been getting things directly, so I think either people are taking it or leaving it at Trudy's, but I am going Wednesday and I'd be willing to even pick it up if you're in the near you know, nearby or something. So just thought I'd let you know. Oh, great, uh, thank you. Could I also say one thing quick, Candace? Um, and this is to Christine as well. Um, the, uh, your thing about what are you sitting on was a perfect thing for me in my life. And also this last week, we had an abundance of food that we, we sort of panic shopped for last year when every, you didn't know what was going to be coming, what would be available. And we went through everything and we made these big piles of food of all different kinds. And we went, uh, we brought it to town and I was, because I remembered Building Bridges, I remembered the name in my head. It was like Building Bridges. So I, we called them from town and they said, yes, you know, bring it over. So we brought this and they were extremely gracious and extremely happy. And so it was just really nice to have all that, uh, something to offer like that and for there to be a place for it to go that was so uh, perfect. So thanks to all of you for that as well. Thank you, Terry. Good to yep. know, good to know. And so, so yeah, you can pretty much, I think almost anything you think you, they would need, they need. So, you know, don't be shy. 
Um, except except clothing, they say no clothing. Oh yeah, no clothing, yeah. Well, but even that, there have been times when they've wanted socks or gloves or, you know, so, but I think if right now that they don't want no, you they to it. No, dump off no bags of clothes, just, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Well, now, Tim, how about it? Can we have a closing song? Sure. First of all, can you hear this? Tim, that was wonderful. Thank so, uh, for having me. <laughs> so I appreciate you, Tim, and I appreciate you, Christina. I appreciate all of you for coming and sharing part of your Sunday with me. Um, I loved it. So I uh, just want to wrap all this stuff up, all this goodness, and just take it into my week, appreciating as I go. I love you all. So I will see most of you next week. So namaste. <laughs>